What's going on everyone? My name is Danny GG and today we have a very interesting topic to discuss regarding Halo Infinite. Joining me today to bounce some of my ideas off is my friend and fellow YouTuber Arash. If you don't know Arash, he runs two YouTube channels both covering Halo content so make sure to go check him out after this video. Links in the description below. Hello. Sweet. So today we would like to talk about Halo Infinite's free to play model compared to a few other games and with similar models and also talk about the pros and cons of this type of game style, whether it's free to play or a more classic $60 full game. So you may all know that in the recent years, many multiplayer games have started to adopt a free to play game with microtransactions, and this has become more and more popular in gaming. And if you're active on my YouTube community page, I ran a poll the other day asking you all which your preferred game model was. So here are the results of that poll. And it looks like 76% of you said you preferred a classic all-inclusive style rather than a free to play game with microtransactions. And sadly for you 76%, we actually do know that Halo Infinite is going to feature a free to play multiplayer with microtransactions. So, Arash, <laughs> I wanted to get your take on this because I saw you were tweeting at me the other day when I posted this. Um, so I just want to see what kind of game model you prefer and uh, then we can hop into some of the pros and cons of each. Yeah, uh, I don't know if there's like a said fast model I prefer. It kind of just, it depends on game to game. Like you're saying, there's a lot of, a lot of pros and cons to, to each system. When it comes to like what game model i prefer right it, it's almost hard to answer the question because the biggest problem with 60 dollars games in today's day and age is nobody buys them unless you're call of duty like you just don't get away with it so if if a new game comes out that you want to play and it charges a premium i guess like overwatch is the last game that i can think of that did it successfully other than call of duty and shocker, it's like an Activision Blizzard title because they just do whatever they want, I guess. But like, yeah. even that wasn't sixty dollars; it was like forty. And besides that, it, it makes me laugh because at the same time, there were things like Battleborn, which tried to charge like sixty dollars, and there was Lawbreakers, which tried to only charge like thirty. Yeah, and these flop. are like AAA games that were legitimately good games, but just totally flopped because unless you're a huge IP or you're Blizzard. <laughs> nobody buys multiplayer only games so halo is a little bit different because it does have the single player component stuff like doom eternal you know that obviously still costs 60 dollars but for being honest no one really buys doom for the multiplayer especially doom eternal with with its battle mode thing so it it, it just depends if you're if you're talking and halo infinite's campaign is still going to cost money right there so i guess they haven't it, it, straight up said it they've only said free to play multiplayer which implies yeah. you know yeah so i'm sure it's going to cost something or maybe it'll have like free elements we have to pay to get full i don't know. we'll see we'll see what happens there but if you as a player want as many people to play halo infinite with your best bet is it to be free to play now there are drawbacks to that and we can kind of outline some of those i mean all right, so in regards to Halo Infinite specifically, they have confirmed the multiplayer to be free to play. And one of the largest pros of free to play games, obviously, one being it's free, and like you said, and two, because it's free, there is no barrier to entry. And with today, everyone has huge hard drives on their consoles and PC. You can just download a game, depending on your internet speed, you could download a game like Halo or Call of Duty within a few hours, and it's, it's like, you know hop on this game tonight it's free so so we're kind of at a an interesting intersection of like all these different things so i feel like it the 2010s kind of brought on microtransactions mm -hmm. and it's you so you had 60 dollars full games coexisting with full-on microtransaction loot box systems uh, mm -hmm. but then around i would say like 2013 14 15 you kind of had these free-to-play games come out Free to play, totally reliant on microtransactions. Some were kind of like pay to win, uh, but now it's like, like you said, uh, you know, if you want to be a big multiplayer game like these days, you are free to play. So your Apex, your Fortnite, your Valorant, your whatever. You bring up a great point with the DLC. Like 
some of the cons of the the sixty dollar style are sixty dollars is never the end. Like you said, Halo Two, Halo Three, you have your DLC divides the player base, um, and you know once your player base is divided, your matchmaking dies, and and the multiplayer game is dead without its player base. So I don't know, it's tricky, and I think Halo Infinite is evolving in the right direction because uh, three four three Microsoft. They want Halo Infinite to be the biggest Halo game and possibly one of the biggest multiplayer games ever, at least like top 10 or something. So by making a free-to-play multiplayer, that's the way to do it. And you know, that's how Fortnite did it. So any thoughts on that? Yeah, for sure. I think, uh, yeah, I think you made some really good points. Your, your point right there at the end, I think without a doubt, day one or week one or month one, whatever metric you want to pull, Halo Infinite will be the most players that Halo has ever seen. Yep. Whether or not those players stick around, that's totally dependent on the game. But with it being free to play, it's going to be on the multiplayer front. It's going to be the most players that Halo has ever seen. It's going to way surpass the numbers of Halo Three, Four, Five, whichever game you want to reference. It's gonna, it's gonna probably like double to triple those on on, on launch, especially oh, with sure. the marketing and everything, and it being on PC on release. So that's going to be huge. Uh, like you mentioned, and this is maybe less relevant to halo specifically although we still don't know all the details to the campaign but game pass game pass has really has really shake shaken up the the uh, the, the flip side of it right it's almost turned every game <laughs> every game on game pass into like a pseudo free to play game because you pay your subscription and then you, now you get all these games yeah no you're totally right and i'm really interested to see how since Halo kind of has it all, um, I think I was speaking with Infinite Forges about this, and the Forge, we don't know if that is lumped in with the multiplayer, if that is going to be within the free-to-play portion, or if that will be locked behind whatever, you know, Game Pass or $60 price tag like the campaign. Um, but Forge, we both agreed, should be included in the multiplayer as a free-to-play option, because think how many people that will bring in alone like you know all the people who like to build stuff if you like play minecraft or something kind of a similar deal um even if you don't like the competitive aspect like forge is a game in itself um but yeah i yeah i have to imagine that forge is just part of the free-to-play multiplayer it would be super weird in my opinion to try and section that off as a as a paid option but i mean it could happen i guess anything could so, really happen so it's tricky where they draw the line. So, like, I'm just going to use Apex as an example because I play a shit ton of that game. Um, Apex has one mode, or two modes, pubs and ranked. And yeah. there's no campaign, there's no there's not, no custom games, no custom lobbies, no anything. So the free-to-play game is that. You, you're ready up, and there's the game. But Halo is so much more complex. So we know the campaign is going to be paid, but then you have your custom games. Is that going to be free like they, they haven't confirmed they've said free to play multiplayer which could literally be you have access to like the social playlists or something and yeah i've even yeah. heard people speculate that ranked is going to be a paid game mode or something which would would be yeah. stupid i think but um i think that's just something we need more information on but it's a really unique situation because you know a lot of or a lot of reasons why i think people come back to halo over like a game like Call of Duty or Apex or something is because it has all these features. You have your campaign, mm -hmm. theater, forge, everything. Um, while those other games are kind of like one trick ponies in a way. So yeah. for them to adopt this free to play model, um, it's really going to be a balancing act. You know, where do they draw the line? They don't want to give too much because then, you know, they're letting people take advantage of them, but it's Microsoft. So we know if anything, they draw the line stingy, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, Only Slayer is free to play. Oh, you're in a capture flag match? It, it kicks you out or something. It, it reminds me of like if you wanted to play the ranked playlist in Halo 3, you had to have like half of the, the map DLC oh, packs. Yeah. But yeah. It, it, it actually will be interesting to see how a game like Halo actually implements free to play. Because like you said, all, all the games that we've been mentioning as free to play games are basically they're multiplayer only and they mostly have like a main mode and then like ancillary game modes that are less focused on right you have 
Apex, which is basically, it's just a battle royale, and sometimes it has like a limited time mode. You have Fortnite, which is just a battle royale, and then it has like creative now, uh, and then it has Save the World, which they've kind of just abandoned. <laughs> and, then, and then you have like Warzone, which is a battle royale, and it's free, and it's just a battle royale, but then if you want to play the campaign for Call of Duty, or you want to play like their quote unquote their arena style gameplay right then you have to pay for it so the the they've confirmed that infinite is free to play for multiplayer but actually yeah there's a lot of questions what that actually could mean for halo all right guys so i hope you've enjoyed our conversation on this topic i think it's a really interesting topic the whole debate of free to play classic just how a game functions in general um so i really want to hear your guys opinions in the comments below and we also have a community discord so make sure to join that i'll have the link in the description below and i want to thank arash for coming on the channel with me today like i said he has a ton of halo content he has two channels i'll post both of those links also down below for you guys to check out but that's going to do it for today so i will see you guys in the next video Peace. see ya